Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining our latest Ask Greenwich session. My name is Councillor Danny Thorpe, I'm the leader of the Royal Borough of Greenwich, and I am delighted today to be joined by uh, my two wonderful colleagues, Denise and Chris, and I shall hand over to Denise uh, and then Chris to introduce themselves and tell them, tell you a bit about who they are uh, and what they do. Denise, let's begin with you. Hi, I'm um, as Councillor Denise Scott McDonald, and I'm the Deputy Leader, so um, I work alongside Danny, so sometimes when he doesn't want to do some things, <laughs> he passes it along to me. Um, but um, I also am a Peninsula Ward Councillor, and uh, my portfolio as a Cabinet Member is business, and uh, business, but it's employment and skills, which is why I'm here today. I've had uh, a number of years on Cabinet, so I've, I've done transport, um, the climate change, um, um, agenda as well as the culture and uh, historical and ledger agenda. So I've got a bit of business experience from there, working at the um, um, executive level, as well as also I have um, worked with public health. Um, so in, in my other life, I also work as a university lecturer uh, one day a week and, and teach uh, young people uh, stuff. But, um, and I live in Greenwich. Um, and I can't think of anything more. I've been a councillor since 2014. Great, thanks so much, Janine. Chris? Hi, I'm Chris Kirby. I'm the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources. So um, I've got responsibility for setting the budget uh, for next year. Um, I look after HR and staffing issues um, and various other bits and pieces, including websites and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, outside of council, um, I get bossed around by two kids who are under the age of four, which is why it looks Yay. like I have met. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we've had a range of questions that have come in today. And just to say thanks to all of you who are watching. Uh, this session is being streamed live on our Facebook page. Um, you can also join in there in the comments section. If you'd like to pose a question that perhaps you haven't already sent in, you can use the hashtag Ask Greenwich and we will pick that up. Um, now, I'm going to begin um, really with um, Denise. Um, mm -hmm. And Denise, obviously, in your uh, role looking after the borough's employment and um, all of the issues to do with businesses, um, we're currently in a series of national restrictions. Um, so I just wondered um, what news you had uh, about the next phase of those restrictions. Are we likely to be coming out of the restrictions on the 2nd of December? And what should people be doing to prepare for those? Okay, um, I mean, to be quite honest, we, we really don't know because um, I don't, as, as we've gone through this whole COVID thing, it keeps changing all the time, and which is really disappointing, um, especially for businesses. And so I know a lot of it is tied into the R rating. We've heard about how many deaths per thousand about whether or not we're going to come out of, um, or what type of lockdown we're gonna come out of. To my understanding, I know we've got the lockdown into December and then we get we re-enter into the tier system and hopefully we will be at a tier system that is much lower. Um, I mean, our numbers have been relatively good. I mean, I don't know, Danny, if you're going to say more about the numbers in Greenwich um, and how that's been impacting us. But um, our numbers generally have been relatively good. and It's not as bad as what's going on in the north of the country. In terms of business, I know as a council, um, as soon as the first lockdown started, we started a conversation with our businesses and we started the conversation with the people on the high streets and we haven't stopped doing that. So we have, and so if you are a business or you know anyone in business, please um, stay, get in contact with us. Let us know how you're doing. Um, there are, there's information on the, on the website. If you are in the town center, make sure you contact our local town center managers and stay up to date with what's going on. We're doing our best we can to make sure that any money in the first lockdown and now again in the second set of lockdown we've been given money by national government to give out some of that pot of money says you can only give it to this type of business and the government says to us you can't you've got to follow those guidelines and some of the other pot of money is discretional whereby we can actually decide and sometimes we'll take a look at 
where there are holes in where the government is applying money and we try and say let's get that pot of money and let it get outside the door so um the last um lockdown we were able to give 1.8 million uh, to discretionary uh, and we were able to do that because we looked back and see who, which type of business missed out on funding um, but my suggestion is to watch the website sign up to uh, business updates uh, that's really 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 important and um, don't be afraid to get in contact with the business team. Um, and if you are located anywhere near any of the town centers, uh, we have a town center manager in the Eltham area. We have one in Woolwich and that covers Plumstead as well as in Greenwich town center. So please stay in contact. Um, and I think that's probably the best I can, I can do right now. Great, thank you so much. And just to um, build on what Denise said, um, myself and other London leaders, we always have a five o'clock uh, Monday evening call uh, along with chief execs and the director of public health for London. Um, just to give a sense of where we are in the city, uh, we're obviously monitoring a range of things, including um, the number of infections per 100,000. We know that that is uh, a massive indicator which kind of moves you up the tiers. Um, just to give you um, the full range, um, actually, uh, as of last night, uh, Lewisham had the lowest uh, with 114 cases per 100,000. Uh, Har at Haverin uh, have the highest at 285 cases per 100,000. So you can see now that there is a real uh, range. I think what we're encouraging people to do uh, is obviously make sure uh, that everything stays the same. Um, and you'll have seen all the messaging you know, around uh, this being monitored so that we can uh, get to the 2nd of December uh, and hopefully uh, move into a period uh, of less restriction. Uh, just to say that at a London level, uh, London councils are now completely united uh, that the curfew, the 10 p.m. curfew, which was imposed uh, by the government needs to be scrapped uh, because actually not only is it proven to be unsafe, uh, but it isn't having any material effect uh, on the level of infection. And certainly uh, we are pushing uh, very hard to make sure uh, that actually London uh, as a city uh, clearly continues to work together because although we are individual boroughs, excuse me, fundamentally we are one place uh, and uh, how we kind of manage our way out of this uh, means that we're going to have to uh, continue uh, working together. So we are hoping uh, to have some more information next week as we go on uh, with the review of those uh, restrictions. Um, and just in for context, in Greenwich, uh, in the past week, we had 347 new confirmed cases uh, of COVID. And so that just gives you a sense of kind of what we are dealing with. Uh, but certainly at the moment in London, uh, the growth of COVID is not exponential uh, by any stretch. And it's certainly uh, in the main stable. Uh, so thank you to everyone uh, for doing uh, your bit. So just to stick, Denise, really with um, with you for a second and your yeah. work. Um, obviously, with the national restrictions ongoing, uh, businesses are suffering. So what is on offer for businesses at the moment uh, from the council uh, and how can businesses get support? All right, so um, we've been given question about nine, Lucy. sorry? That's a question from Lucy, sorry. Ah, okay, all right. So we've been um, given from this new pot of money about nine million pounds um, um, of, of funding. So, um, what will happen is that um, we can actually give out some of that funders. Again, it's divided into two pots. There's a discretionary pot, and there is also one that where the government is very much prescribed. Um, so um, what we've done is we've actually emailed and contacted our businesses that, are, that we made contact in the first lockdown um, for them to get information. Um, by the end of this week, we're going to have stuff up online. Uh, with much more detail about what criteria pe people can apply money for uh, uh, apart from, from this tranche of money. So, um, so we're, we are um, trying to get stuff out as quickly as we can. Um, but the thing is, um, if you are a business that's, that's impacted by COVID, um, then you can claim um, money. You don't necessarily have to be closed. Um, you can still be open, but you have to just show that you are impacted by COVID. Um, obviously, if you are a major supermarket or a food business, 
that hasn't been impacted, you, you won't be able to qualify for it, but um, you have to show that you are impacted by that. In our borough, we have a lot of SMEs. So we are looking especially at SMEs, especially because sometimes they're in the procurement line of so many industries and so many businesses in our borough, as well as across London and, and the country. So we are looking particularly at at those groups too, to see how we can best support them um, during this time. So the, the money is only for this month of lockdown. Um, after the, when December, I don't know what will be available there. Okay, great. Um, there's a question here, um, I think from um, Dave. Uh, Dave's asking uh, around uh, businesses who are, uh, whether it's just small businesses that are affected. Uh, but obviously, Dave, it is uh, it's all businesses and all, all business sectors, really, that are not only dealing with restrictions, but seeing uh, reductions in, in trade as well. Um, I'm going to go on now uh, to Chris, um, who looks after our finances. Um, Chris, obviously, COVID-19 uh, has had a massive uh, impact on uh, the council and, and how it's had to respond to the pandemic. Um, but that has come on top of 10 years of brutal and sustained austerity. So... What can you tell us about council finances? Uh, yeah, I mean, brutal and sustained, I think, is an understatement. So um, since 2010 um, and sort of the onset of, of austerity with, with the coalition and Tory, subsequent Tory governments, um, we've lost, we've had 150 million pounds of, of pressure. So 150 million pounds that we've had to find in our, in our budgets. Um, that's basically... £1,500 for every household in the borough that we've lost, um, which is obviously substantial amount of money. Um, that's not going away anytime soon. Um, we are about to begin what's called a medium term financial strategy, um, which we have an, an annual budget every year and each budget is within um, a sort of a more medium term look, which is the financial medium term financial strategy for the next year for this year's budget um, we've got the find 19 million pounds worth of uh, I was going to say savings but they're not savings they're, they're cuts yeah. we've got to find 19 million pounds yeah. cut from our budget and over the next four years we've got to find 62 million pounds to cut from our budget which when you've already lost the figures um, mentioned before you know, 150 million pounds already and now another 62 million um, you know, that, that, that is really, there's no two ways about it that's going to impact people's experience and interaction with the council. Um, and what we're trying desperately to do is find ways to protect frontline services um, because we've got to keep people safe, we've got to collect bins, we've got to clean streets um, with less and less and less money. Um, COVID, uh, coronavirus has sort of lit a bonfire under that problem. So we've seen... Um, obviously people um, uh, who have lost their jobs or have been put on furlough, some of whom have been unable to pay their council tax. Um, so our council tax, tax collection rates um, have been a bit of a problem. Um, and ditto, I mean, Denise was just talking about the support available for businesses. We've seen a drop off in, in business rates collection, which is so there's less money coming into the council at a time when we've already got to find more money. Um, so I think probably um, this is the most difficult time um, financially that I've known in my time as a councillor. Um, Danny, obviously you're much longer in the tooth than the rest of us. It's probably the most difficult time you've known as well. Um, but yeah, really difficult, really tough financial climate. Yeah, and I think um, Chris is obviously trying to make aspersions there about my age, which aren't true until the days immediately. <laughs> Um, but just to say, I think, to kind of people watching, um, in all of the times that I've been a councillor, in terms of all of the roles uh, that I've conducted, and the issues I've represented residents on uh, in Greenwich, I have never experienced the kind of levels of destitution and poverty that people are seeing, uh, dealing almost daily with people who've lost their jobs and their livelihoods. Uh, as a result of COVID, dealing with people whose landlords have been trying to evict them, even though they're not meant to because of COVID, uh, even, you know, watching people arrive uh, in the Woolwich Centre with kind of bags of possessions, um, talking to 
the Winter Night Show are about how they're going to try and prepare uh, for a COVID safe night shelter, um, working with a food bank around food distribution. You know, it is relentless and uh, unending, uh, really. And, and I think that we would just really say to people um, at such difficult times, we are doing absolutely everything we can to support people, uh, number one. And number two, uh, obviously, as well as, you know, kind of COVID being uh, uh, driven by physical health, the impact on all of our mental health has truly been uh, kind of indescribable, really, and, and the pressures that that brings. So please do make sure um, that you're reaching out for support. Um, if you need to, because it is absolutely uh, vital, really. Um, Chris, there's a question here from Melanie um, around business uh, rates and whether or not business rates are going to be frozen um, and what the plans are for council tax in the medium term. Um, so, uh, Melanie, thank you for your question. Um, it's a good question. Um, so, central government um, sets the rate of business rates. Um, we don't know what they're going to do. Um, next week, um, we're expecting a statement from the Chancellor um, when we'll know more. Um, we have to set a budget. Um, we have to take it to our full council in February. Currently, we have no idea what our settlement's going to be. Um, there's been a series of cancelled financial statements throughout the year. Um, and, and essentially, the run-up to us setting the budget has been completely... Uh, the government has, has been in complete chaos. We obviously get given a settlement from central government. We're reliant on that settlement from central government to do uh, our preparations for our budget. Um, uh, and we wait, we're, we're likely to get our final figures probably last year, it was the week of Christmas. Um, and then we have the time from then until February to write the finer details of the budget. And, and really at that, until we know what we're gonna get, um, we can't make a final decision on what's gonna happen with council tax. Given the figures I've just mentioned, I think it's likely, maybe highly likely that we'll have to put up council tax. Um, but as I say, no final decision has been made. But business rates are set by central government. We have no idea what they're going to do. Uh, they make an assessment and revalue them every couple of years. Um, whether they'll whether they'll freeze them this year because businesses need all the help that they can get, you would hope so. But um, we'll wait and see what the chancellor says, if he says anything next week, or if it's another cabinet. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you know the really um, as, as Chris kind of says, you know, there's a lot of uh, num big numbers which are being kind of bandied around you know, by people. But it's worth thinking about the fact that. I think we've had somewhere in the region of 30 million pounds of support now for COVID overall. But in the past yeah. 10 years, we've lost almost 150 million pounds in cuts and austerity. And clearly, you know, this is money which is there to respond to a pandemic. Uh, it's not money that's been given up, given to us to yeah. fix the awful problems that have been yeah. uh, both created really by uh, political choices. Now, uh, it's, it's right. sorry, Dan, can I just say something on that point as well? Because we have had money from central government to fight coronavirus, but it's always been after the fact. Mm. We haven't had an upfront pot of money that will enable us to plan the support that we can give to local people. Mm. It's always been, um, you wait, the government have waited until other councils have, have reached a point of absolute crisis. We've had multiple councils in London telling the government um, that they're going to go bankrupt. I mean, obviously there are some that are in the news. There are some that aren't yet in the news that sort of are, are nearer neighbours to us who are, have literally had to say to the government, unless you give us more money, we're going to run out of money. Yeah. And only at that point have the government come forward with support. Part of what's going to be a really long winter what we need is the government to be proactive and give us the money now that is going to help us support people all the way through to the spring. Um, and there's no sign of that yet. Um, so that's the problem. We have had money, but it's not been done in a planned way. And that's yeah. a big problem. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with what, what, what you said, um, Chris, because even on the business side, when the lockdown started, the first tranche of money um, came out 
and we as a team, and, and I know when I was talking to my counterparts, that means other people who do the portfolio that I do across London, we're all complaining about the same things. And we all were lobbying at the same time saying these types of businesses were falling through the gaps. Um, and, and you see that we're on and on and on. And now we're seeing more support now for leisure. And leisure have been, um, you know, we're a borough that, you know, survives on lots of leisure facilities and entertainment facilities. And they've been lobbying for a very, very long time about it. So it's just this sort of piecemeal approach to this whole situation, which is not helpful. It's not helpful for business because you can't plan. Um, and it's not helpful for us as a council because we want to be the best we can for our local community um, and that community made up of businesses. And uh, it would be, it'd be nice that we had um, much clearer direction on that. Okay, thank you. Um, I just pick up one question here that's coming from Greg. Uh, Greg has asked about whether or not they're going to be whether or not they're going to be cuts to council services uh, because of uh, the pandemic. So, um, Greg, what I'd say there's sort of two things to that really. Is at the moment, um, obviously, we are having to redeploy staff in a number of areas to support uh, areas that are under pressure. Um, we're having some challenges at the moment with our waste service because, obviously, uh, like uh, everyone, we've got people who are off of work who are having to self-isolate uh, who have COVID. Um, so apologies for anyone whose uh, waste collection has been disrupted. We've also had to put staff into uh, areas to support um, the failure of the tra test track and trace system uh, to operate uh, correctly. So for example, we've got a number of caretakers actually who are involved on the ground now in terms of uh, trying to do some of that work uh, so that we can uh, locally uh, trace uh, people who have COVID to stop them spreading the infection. Uh, all I would say without any uh, any additional payments from the government uh, to do that. So we obviously would like to apologise if you are experiencing disruption. Um, our front-facing contact centres uh, are closed except for emergencies. Uh, and obviously, you, you, know, kind of, you can still access services online, uh, but we are under some pressure uh, in relation to that. And I think as Chris has set out longer term, they're going to be very difficult uh, budget choices to be made moving forward about how we how we close uh, that gap, really. Um, now, um, moving on then to, um, there's a couple of questions on the chat, Denise, about uh, what businesses are essential and what businesses aren't. Uh, and Belinda uh, says, basically, is there a way the public can see what new shops and businesses will be opening when others close down. So in terms of, I suppose, how are we sharing information from the business community in Greenwich to residents? Uh, most of that is through um, either the website or through our updates. So if you sign up to the updates, there's business updates, and on those business updates, that's where we share the information about what's going on with businesses and what criteria um, that, that you know, um, what businesses are allowed to open. Um, also, at the same time, you can engage with our business team too, and they will give you the, the updated information. But um, all the information is, is on, on the website. Or she can, if she wants, um, email um, business at rollgreenwich.gov.uk. And there's, there she should be able to find the information. I think the team will, are gonna post it on the site. Um, um, on a Facebook site so that people can um, get the information that they need. Um, but, you know, it, the data keeps changing. So I do have to warn you, just like Chris was talking earlier about when it comes to funding, things keep changing. Um, the data and the information and the restrictions and the type of restriction keep changing. And most of it's changing because people are lobbying the government saying, you can't shut this down or you can't shut that down. So it keeps changing. So my best advice is just to keep up to date with, um, make sure you sign up to the updates, the business updates, and make sure you keep looking at the council website. Um, it's a pandemic, so I suppose, you know, it's, 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 there's a lot of uncertainty out there. So, um, but we're trying our best to keep up to date too, as a team. Great, okay, thank you. Uh, there's a uh, question here um, from uh, Jeannie. Uh, I know Joe's just replied to that in the chat, um, Jeannie. So, uh, Joe's posted a phone number and that'll be helpful to you. Uh, if you oh, great. still have an issue, then you can also make contact with your counsellors, uh, drop one of us an email, and we'll be happy to pick that up. Uh, Absolutely. I'm not going to get into your uh, personal circumstances to protect you, um, but obviously, please make sure that you do. 
um, ask uh, for help here. Um, obviously, uh, there's another question here from uh, a business owner uh, of Just B33, which is a business based in Elton, um, who talks about um, the significant challenges and losses that they're facing uh, due to the ongoing pandemic. Um, as Denise has said, we are really doing our best to help. Yeah. We will make sure that we can uh, get you the information uh, about the business support scheme uh, that we're running uh, and you can apply for that to hopefully receive uh, some financial support. So we will post uh, that one in there uh, as well. Um, now, moving on then to um, the next question, um, a good one here from Lewis. Is it up to businesses to work out social distancing rules? What is essential or non-essential to have in shops? For example, hand sanitizer. So Denise, yeah. what are the rules? Who's enforcing the rules? And <laughs> what should shops be doing? All right, so first, so the rules are, um, it's, it's a two meter distance, um, unless you have a face covering. I think it's 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 a you you can actually work much more closely, but I would encourage you to do two meter distance. I know as a council, look at Danny. Danny's got his hand sanitizer. Well done, Danny. <laughs> um, it's important that uh, there's ventilation too. I think that's really important. It's important that shops do have um, hand sanitizer. Um, it's important that I think it's 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 based on the shops too to encourage social distancing and actually to get screens in place so that people are separated. Um, we do have wardens um, patrolling our high streets who are well one um, they're not the police um, but they are there to offer advice and guidance. They're there also to um, do a, a measure of enforcement but not like a major enforcement team. It's interesting because each area calls their COVID wardens, if you want to use like a different name. So some people call them COVID wardens, some people call them COVID friends. They have all different names all across um, London as, as well as across the country about what they, they call people who help to enforce COVID rules. Um, again, also, um, it'd be important to have a conversation with our business team. So if you are in one of the town centres, um, there are the business teams that operate within the town centres. And we also have, um, we have a handful left. Uh, during the last lockdown, we got a, bit, a pot of money from the government to um, hand out things like um, posters in the window, signs on the floor, on the doors and things like that. And we do have a handful of those packs left for businesses who do want them, as well as talking through, um, our business team are more than happy to come down to your business look what's working, what's not working, and where um, you need to put things in place. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's about, it's, there's gonna be less people going through the doors, um, um, you know, at this time. Um, during the lockdown, most places should be closed, other than if you're a food place. Um, but um, um, yes, so, sorry, I've got, I think I've done that yet. Thank yeah. you. Wash your hands there. Yeah, exactly face covering, take all the precautions, um, yeah. because we want to come out of this lockdown with a lower R rating as well as um, with numbers down, so. Brilliant, thank you so much, Denise. And just to, uh, there's a couple of questions that have come into the chat. So Jeannie has asked about whether or not pubs and hospitality are gonna be opening on the 2nd of December. Um, we don't know that, I'm afraid, and that's not yeah. a local decision. Uh, so we yeah. can't answer that question for now. All we can say is that we are uh, doing our best um, to work with the government to make sure the rules are clear uh, and that also as soon as we know anything uh, everyone in Greenwich will know something so people have time to prepare. Um, we've also had... Um, a it's, a good, it's good that London councils have supported the ten, uh, get rid of, um, supporting the campaign against the 10 o'clock rule. Um, I think that's really important because local businesses have struggled with that. Sorry Danny, go ahead. And a question that's come in from Leslie but Leslie's question, I'm afraid, is because Leslie's in a uh, discussion with the legal department. Leslie Ooh. is only appropriate to continue uh, <laughs> discussions offline, I think. Um, okay, all right. I'll become involved yeah. in that now. Uh, now, um, just a final one. I know there's a couple of questions online uh, about uh, the transport situation, uh, in particular uh, the new uh, low traffic neighbourhoods and bus lanes. 
Um, whilst I totally appreciate that there is some uh, disruption that's being caused, it's really important that we understand why disruption is being caused, and that's because there are more people who are using cars at the moment than there were before the lockdown. Uh, and actually, the real challenge uh, is that we have seen in Greenwich over a 10 year period, 130 million more miles being driven uh, on Greenwich Road uh, than is the case in 2009. Um, so please continue to feed into the consultations, um, but let's be clear about what's driving uh, those traffic uh, increases. We are taking uh, account uh, of all uh, feedbacks um, and we will make sure uh, that, that is, those, those comments are taken on board. Um, Manny, thank you for your email about debt services. There are a range of uh, services in our welfare advice team that we provide advice to uh, about debt as well as in our voluntary sector. So we'll ask the team to make sure that they respond to that when you get uh, your information. Um, now that is um, all of the questions that have come through. I'm just checking on my uh, phone to make sure that we haven't uh, missed any. Um, but no, it looks like we've answered all of your questions. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us for uh, this um, this session on um, Ask Greenwich. Uh, the next session uh, of Ask Greenwich uh, will be coming up um, very soon. Um, and we will make sure that we obviously publicize uh, that day and who will be our guests uh, joining us then so you can join in uh, for another session. Uh, thanks so much everyone for joining in. Have a great Tuesday. Stay safe, take care and we'll see you soon. Bye. Take care.